Hello everyone and welcome to the Midweek Mentor. My name is Elliot, if you don't know me yet, pastor at Lifeline Church, and I am so excited that you have decided to join us on a Wednesday night or whenever you are deciding to watch this because on demand is fun. And on demand is when I get to watch stuff whenever I want to, because it's my demand. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue what I had been talking about uh, about three weeks ago. I started a, a, a semi-series with you guys on here, and it's all about the fundamentals of Jesus. Since then, Shallon has come on and taught us some amazing things about scheduling our time, and Tiffany has, has come on and told us some amazing things about humility, and I am thrilled that there are so many great teachers among us at Lifeline Church. So it's my privilege now to continue and go into uh, week two of the fundamentals of Jesus. And this, this study I'm kind of calling, this portion of it is, is being a disciple, being a disciple of Jesus. What does it mean to be a disciple? And I just have three quick points for you about what it means to be a disciple. Of course, being a disciple of Jesus is a few more points than that. Okay, you got me. It's true. It's, it's a few more points than that. But if I had to summarize it, I would summarize it. If I was forced to summarize it in a quick video, I would summarize it this way. The first thing I'd want us to do is, is take up our cross daily. This is something that Jesus talked about in Luke 9. And, and I'll just read it to you. Luke 9, let's start in verse 23. Then Jesus said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways and take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Okay, being a follower of Christ is, is not supposed to be easy. It's not, it was never intended to be easy. Now, I don't know about you, but I've actually seen, I've literally seen people walking down the street with crosses on their back. It's kind of weird to me um, because it's just a show, you know, hey, bless them. They're, they're going for it. But that's, this is, is a metaphor. So Jesus did it literally. Jesus took up his cross. You know, but it was meant to display when he's saying this, that we're supposed to do the same thing. He's not saying we're supposed to take up a literal cross and walk down the street. He's saying you need to bear any burdens that come your way because you want to follow me. Take up your cross. Take up any burdens. For example, I'm shooting a little video in a, in a hot box garage because my air conditioner is broken. And so... Yeah, it's, it's a tiny cross, but I'm bearing it well. Anything, any, anything, Jesus is saying, whatever comes your way as a difficulty, count it as gain because we are called to take up our cross daily. We need to live our lives for Him other than for ourselves. That's, that's essentially what taking up your cross means. No one wants to take up a cross for any other reason other than to benefit, if it would be, if that's a selfless move. It's a selfless act. Our lives are meant to be lived in a selfless way where I'm bearing burdens I wouldn't normally bear because that's what following Christ means. It means picking up my cross, letting go of my selfish nature and following Him. So let's talk about the next thing is, is the greatest commandment. Being a follower of Jesus, we need to talk about the greatest commandment. So this is in Matthew 22. Matthew 22, I've bookmarked it so you don't have to watch me fumble around in my Bible. It's in Matthew 22, among other places. But let's read it out of Matthew 22, starting in verse 36, shall we? Okay, right here. It says this, teacher which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second 
is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Being a disciple means following in his footsteps, following in his commandments. Lucky for us, he summed them up in a, in a very easy way. Because if we had to, you know, some people are better at it than others. Do you like my bookmarks, by the way? I've got lots of them. If we had to, and, and many of us do, but go through each letter of the law, and go, oh my gosh, am I making it? Am I making it? Am I making it? Am I making it? It would be pretty hard to keep up with. But Jesus made it very easy. He summed it up so easily. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And then later in the story, you, you might know this already, but if you don't, it's so important that who, who, is, who is our neighbor? Our neighbor is, is anybody, everybody. We need to learn to love. It has to do with the very first thing that being a follower of Jesus stands for. It's selflessness. Being for the Lord, doing everything that we do to serve the Lord, to please the Lord, and then to please others. Loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind literally means with all you've got. Just with everything that you've got, all your energy, all your passion, everything that you have to give. Jesus said your neighbor. He meant everybody. Have you ever heard of the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, I, I, it, my home I was raised in wasn't necessarily a Christian one, but we, we understood the golden rule. My mama taught us that golden rule. Now, we need to we need to do for others the same way we would have them because there's something inherently understood about it. Even other religions kind of kind of jump on with that because there's something built in. It's almost like God built something inside of us to know that we should be that we should be doing things for others, that we should be helping others. You know, other religions call it karma. But God says, God says, do unto others. Do unto others. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others who have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. No one hate. Jesus goes on to say in other places that, that no one hates their own body. No. Now we, we usually live to please ourselves. And, but God says, as you would please yourself, please others. As you would, as you would, Try and make yourself feel loved and try and make yourself feel accepted and do that for others. Do that for others. And so loving God, and that's, that's the great commandment, really. So let's talk about the next part of being a disciple. So now it's the great commission. The great commission. And that is summed up in Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I've got it bookmarked. Matthew 28. Some of you know this, but... Others may not know it so well. Matthew 28, let's start in verse 18. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Okay, so what's being said here? Okay, you're a Jesus follower now. You've, you've accepted Jesus into your heart. He is the Lord of your life. So what now? Now we need to pass on what we have. That's something inherently Christian. Is thinking of others. There it is again. Selflessness. I could have titled this whole thing selflessness because it's not about us. Like we're in the fold now. We're good. If you're a believer, if you're a Christ follower, you good. You're there. You're going to continue to grow. You're going to continue to read your Bible. But Christ on his way out is saying, you need to go to every nation. And you need to make disciples of all of, all of those nations. Bring them in. Do what you need to do to make those disciples. This applies to every single one of us. That means that some of you, you're going to be pastors one day. Some of you, you're, you're going to function as pastors and never have the title. 
And you know what? Be okay with it. Be okay with all of that. Some of you are going to be in the workplace. Some of you are going to be in the marketplace. But your, your main function is going to be bringing people into the kingdom. Yeah, you're going to make money and everything. But that's going to be like on the side. <laughs> what you're really doing is bringing people into the kingdom. Because as a Christ follower, you're always thinking about the eternal. And as a Christ follower, you're always thinking about how you can bring people in to this faith that is so life-giving. That is so life-giving. And yes, there's opportunity for, for confrontation there. There's opportunity for, for letting people know, hey, there's a better way. But largely, I found in our culture, man, if we would just, if we would just think of others, if we would just do like Paul said and be all things to all men so that I might save some, man, when I'm around somebody, man, I don't mind, I don't mind doing a little mirroring too. I'll be like, how, how can I talk to this brother so that he can hear me? How can I talk to this sister so she can understand me? I'm, I'm lucky because I got a little ghetto in me. So I can, I can really, but I've also got a little business class. Come on, somebody. I, I can fly business class and I can also find you in cell block C. So I encourage, man, if you've got it like that, tap into all the different ways that you can interact with people. Don't demand that they get on your level before you even begin a relationship with them. That's not selflessness. That's selfishness. Selflessness says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, come to you. I'm going to come to you on your level. I'm going to learn how you talk so I can talk with you the way you need to be talked with. So some of you are going to be pastors. Some of you are going to be business leaders. Some of you are just going to, man, what, whatever it is, remember the Great Commission that we are to be making disciples of all nations. Have you heard the tone of my voice begin to get excited? Because this is so, this is so, this is something very on the deep inside of me. No matter who you are, no matter what role you play, it's not for the pastors. It's not for, you know, some spiritual elect. No, it's for you. It's for all of us. We are all called to be ministers of this gospel. Man, if, and if that sounded too churchy for you, I'm just trying to say, all of us have an opportunity to speak life into somebody else and bring them into this kingdom. It's for all of us. It's the Great Commission, and it's for every believer. Now, we don't, we don't hire staff at our church to actually go out and reach people. No, it's for every single person on our dream team. It's for every single person that call them, calls themselves a member of Lifeline Church. This is for everybody, and it's beautiful that way. It's wonderful that way. It's messy that way. But it's good that way. It's good that way. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but in time, you will, you will begin to see your role. And I hope it's today. You'll begin to see your role as a minister of the gospel and, and flowing out into the Great Commission. It's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, everybody. And it starts on day one. Some of you, maybe you're very new in your walk with the Lord. Well, let me encourage you. You're one day newer than the person sitting next to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So let's go for it today. Let's take up our cross. Then let's love the Lord, our God, with all of our heart and love our neighbor as ourselves. And let's fulfill the great commission that says we should be making disciples of all nations. Hey, before we split ways, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every single person listening, sound of my voice. Lord, that I, and I pray that we would just grow in you. Lord, we're disciples under you. And we want to grow. We want to grow in our love for you. We want to grow in our love for others. We want to grow in our ability to evangelize, but to just connect with people. To be able to be selfless, God and to take up our cross and, and suffer a little bit or a lot bit, suffer for you and, and move forward in, in that. Lord, I pray for every person listening now that there would be a real joy in that and that the more we do this, the more that we follow you, the more that we walk out our discipleship with you, the more we will just see that this is the life we've always been wanting. 
This is the life we've always been wanting, that there would be such fulfillment there in the sacrifice, that there would be such fulfillment in the sacrifice, so much more than getting things for ourselves, so much more than having things the way we want them, but we would have even more fulfillment seeing other people grow, seeing other people come in because selflessness is its own reward. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. And I'm so glad we get to spend time with each other online. And I hope you join us next week for another episode of the Midweek Mentor. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this content if it's blessed you. We'll see you again real soon.